Today's an exciting day because we got our wood stove. This came weeks early and we're excited to get it installed in our living room. So hopefully that's what we're working on today is just getting the wood stove in the house and installed. We got the wood stove unpacked and safely off the pallet. That was kind of scary. This thing is heavy. But now I gotta do a couple things. First, we need another hole through the wall. We need a hole because I'm gonna be doing a air intake from outside. This wood stove can be set up for using the room air or drawing air from outside for the combustion to burn. The reason we're doing that is because, first of all, for mobile homes, it's usually required to draw air from the outside. Another reason is just because we feel more comfortable about it that way, that it's not using up our indoor air, but rather just pulling the air from outside and, and leaving us oxygen. To draw the outside air on this stove, there's just a little ring that you buy and attach it down here. And we're gonna put a flex duct going out to the wall. So I'm just gonna go ahead and read the instructions, measure out my location for the hole where the wood stove is gonna be and I'll come back when I'm ready to cut the hole. I think I'm ready to start drilling the holes. So I'm gonna put a four inch hole saw on this side. I'm gonna do a four and a quarter on the outside. Want it a little wider out there, but I want it nice and clean in here so we don't have a lot of air gaps. Okay, why is this so wobbly? What happened to this thing? How'd my saw get bent? That's weird. It's. It's pretty extremely bent. I'm like shocked right now. You can do a step on it. I'm just gonna go inside and outside with four and a quarter inch and we'll just have to caulk it. It'll be fine. There it is. You guys, I'm so slow when I work. It, the whole day gets by. I don't get anything done. It's because I'm always afraid to do stuff like this. I really try to plan it out. I want to take out some insulation, but not too much. I want to keep it nice and insulated. Now for my air intake duct, I just picked up a dryer vent hood for the wall cap and I took the flapper out of it. Just pulled it right out of there. Uh, and then it's a cap that can draw air in. This screen is a little bigger than I'd like because insects could come in. I'm not too worried about it. Maybe I'll put some window screen in there. We'll see. But it's just a dryer vent duct. Oh, there it is. I'm sure it was fighting that plastic on the inside. So let's check out the inside, see how it went in. That is perfect. All right, guys, so this is secured. I attached it with Cabinet screws. I always love my cabinet screws by GRK. Um, that's sponsored. Did you know that? It's no. <laughs> We've never been sponsored. So, um, I think this looks a little unfinished. It's behind the wood stove, but you'll see it from the side. So I want to finish it off. What I'm going to do is cut a piece of wood trim to go around it. Basically, my idea is cutting a circle and then cutting a circle out of it. And it's gonna look 
And we're gonna paint it black and make it look like this. So it's gonna match the thimble trim. Big thimble, mini thimble. It's not gonna be a thimble, but pretend. And then, yeah. All right guys, just made my wooden donut. Here it is. It looks actually really good. I freehand cut that on the jigsaw out of a piece of plywood. And I just wanted to show it to you before I paint it black. So we got the ring painted. It's basically dry. I'm gonna go ahead and hook it to the wall. Because I don't have any studs or framing in the wall right here, I'm actually gonna try to glue it on. I'm gonna be using hot glue. Just tack it on, do it quick, and it should go, it should go fine. Work fast. I like that. And just so you guys know, I'm going to be using this Flex Duck Duck. Why? It's like I can't even talk. <laughs> to attach the air intake to the wood stove after I get it slid in place. Well guys, here's your first real look at the front of the wood stove, but don't judge it yet. There's an important step that we haven't done yet, but it's time to get this slid into place. We're definitely gonna talk more about the wood stove when I get it installed, and we'll tell you all about the brand and why we chose this. But let's get it slid back. All right, I got the wood stove more or less where I want it. Now I'm going to try to attach the chimney and just make sure everything's like straight, plumb level, and looks good. This is, let me show you this. This is the actual chimney pipe coming in from outside the house. So this is the stainless steel, double wall, whatever, chimney pipe. And to convert it into an interior, and this is actually a double wall interior pipe. Uh, I don't know if you can see it, but it's double wall. We just use this little converter ring. That pops in. Now it was recommended by the stove guy that I could spray paint this pipe black to match the rest of the interior pipes. I opted to leave it silver because honestly it doesn't offend me. I just don't mind seeing it silver. I did pick up this finishing ring and that's going to cover this kind of open edge and create a transition from that silver to the black. What I'm doing is drilling holes through this collar, through the pipe, and through this adapter, and joining them all together. And if you guys are wondering why this bench is empty, it's because we were doing this video before we showed that video, but you'll probably see that video before this video. So hopefully we have wood and everything stacked in there for you guys. But you would have already seen that. Step one done. Now, we should be able to put the elbow in here. This is a 12 inch piece I got for the bottom. So I'm gonna put it on here. Hopefully this fits. I'm going to be putting an adjustable piece here. This one slides in and out. Hopefully it fits in there and adjusts properly. I may have to take this off. Alright, 
we're making progress. I think I got it all secure. Now there is this part and it's meant to go right around this section here to kind of hide those ribs. I don't know if I'm going to add it or not. It doesn't really bother me seeing those ribs right there. So we'll think about that one. Not a big deal. I could add that later. The next step I'm going to do is right here in the sides of the wood stove, there's holes made for mounting it to the floor uh, and just to keep it stable. That's kind of necessary for a mobile home installation because they don't want it ever moving if the home ever moved. This home will never be moved, but it's also important if you're doing like the air intake on the back, just so it never, you don't want the stove getting shifted around and dislodging the air intake or the pipes. So we're gonna be screwing it to the floor. I have a little uh, diamond drill bit, so I'm gonna use that. Just drill some holes in the tile, hook it to the wood. We made big progress on this stove tonight. Chimney is done, it looks good. The stove is attached to the floor, it's solid, and I got the air duct hooked up. I just clamped it on with a four inch clamp, you know, pretty simple back there. There's one more thing we gotta do to finish this stove. I wanna get it done tonight before we go to bed, and that's putting on the side panels. This stove comes with these side panels that are really cool. You can get them in different colors. We chose white to go with everything else in the house. We're gonna put the fire brick in the box here and then we'll be done. The wood stove will be done, except for the outside chimney. We can't start a fire. So it goes there first. And then the next one next to it. And then the other side. Okay, what's next? Okay, so now you're done with those. Yeah. Place two A fire bricks on the firebox floor. Without trying to reveal too much of the living room, the wood stove is done and I want to show it off. So here's our new wood stove. It's made by Pacific Energy. It's the Neo 1.6. They also have a smaller 1.2 and a larger 2.5. We chose the 1.6 because it was kind of a normal size stove, took a 16 inch log but it wasn't overkill for the living room. We didn't want it to be too big and take up a lot of space in the room. We chose this stove because it has a really modern look. We thought it was gonna fit in well with our theme and it does, it looks beautiful in here. These side panels were a really cool touch. Instead of seeing just a black stove, we thought the white would look really neat. We could also get stainless steel, black, or I think they have a new one called Desert, Modern Desert, and that's a really cool orange copper color. That would have looked awesome too, but I think the white helps this feel smaller in the space. We really like uh, trying to make the space feel open and cohesive. We don't have a huge living room, so stuff like that really helps. The reason we chose this wood stove is not just because of the looks, but also because it's mobile home approved, which basically means that it can be bolted to the floor so it can't move around. And also, more importantly, is it has a air intake. You guys saw that, where it brings fresh air in from outside. That's required for most mobile home installations as far as I know, so I had to make sure I found one for that. Even though our home isn't mobile, it's very well sealed up. We have new windows, new doors, everything's pretty uh, draft-free, leak-free. You don't want to be burning up all the air in your house and creating a negative pressure inside your house. You don't want that. So instead, this doesn't create that negative pressure in the home, and it just pulls air from outside, burns it in the stove, and sends it off through the chimney. Really cool. On the back of it, we put this duct on here, and it's literally a four inch duct that we just left loose, wrapped over it, just because we didn't really care for, we didn't really care for how all this looked. I had to tape this on because this aluminum is so soft, I just couldn't clamp it. So from here, that's what it looks like. It doesn't look so bad. And let me back up. When you come in, that's what you can see, and that doesn't look so bad compared to just the duct with the tape around it, this flexible duct. And you can see how that just clamps onto the stove. 
I like the little black ring I made, that's pretty cool. We did find some damage when unpacking it. Right here, the uh, finish is chipped off. I think we can touch that up, I'm not gonna complain about it. So here's the top view, just a flat surface. You guys saw me install the pipe. It's really cool that this pipe, it's got fingerprints on it, I can clean it up, but it's all stainless steel. But you don't even see it. It just turns black because it reflects all of this. So that's kind of cool. It just blends right in. You wouldn't even know. One of the big selling points for me to buy this was this. It can be so close to the wall. It actually only requires eight inches to combustible surfaces. So I actually have nine inches, so that's perfect. And also eight inches from the side. That's all you need. So we can, we can put furniture all the way up to the line here. That's how I designed this. And this is about eight inches, maybe a hair over. And also the last thing is that it doesn't need a pad under it. As long as I have it on a non-combustible floor, like this uh, porcelain tile, it's totally fine. A lot of wood stoves, you need to put that thick, heavy, pad underneath the wood stove you know it's usually made of uh, tiles and stuff stones blocks they usually want it really thick and off the floor so this is perfect it just blends into the space it sits on the floor sits close to the wall it doesn't hog up our living room and the way it accomplishes that is first it brings the stove box up off the floor so that the heat isn't close to the floor and second these panels all these panels around here actually shield the wood stove and it turns into more of a convection heater than a radiant heater. Um, regular wood stoves that are just an iron box, all cast iron, they radiate heat out the sides. And now these, this is an iron box, but the panels have an air gap between them and the sides. So instead of radiating that direct heat, what it's doing is it's pulling air through and out. It's kind of a convection heater. And you're going to see the same thing on the back. You see this panel? Here's the burn box, but here's a steel panel with a big air gap in between. And it draws the air up along the back of the wood stove, through here, and out the front here. So all that shielding kind of creates that convection current of heat instead of radiant heat. And that's why, and that's how they can get these close clearances to the wall. It's shielded from that radiant heat, shielded. Perfect. Now I hope I'm not over explaining all that. I just really wanted to point it out because a lot of older, more conventional wood stoves require a lot of space around them. And I don't want you guys to worry. A lot of people might be concerned because we didn't put anything on our back wall to shield the heat. We didn't put anything on our floor and we're so close to everything. So I just wanted to make sure you guys know that this wood stove is designed for it. Eight inch clearances all around for a mobile home installation and in the USA the combustible the non-combustible pad underneath this floor extends 16 inches from the front of the stove and it does that so it's perfect totally safe I can't wait to try it out we can't burn it yet because we don't have the chimney going up through the roof but inside is done show you guys inside again it's not a huge burn box but we don't want to cook ourselves out of the house this is just a backup and um, supplemental heat so it's perfect also down here you can just lift this open and there is an ash drawer down here and there's a little handle here to open up a, a little door in the floor there so you can just dump the ashes into the pan now before we go i'll mention outside here you can see this is where the tea comes out the ball for the pipe it actually has a clean out on the bottom. All I gotta do is take this out, unclamp these, and this plug comes right out so you can clean your chimney. That's one of the reasons we put it on the wall instead of all through the attic, because we wanted it to be easy to clean and maintain. The other reason we wanted it to go through the wall instead of the attic is because if the roof ever leaked, if the chimney ever leaked water around it, it would be outside at least and not going into our living room ceiling. I'd rather deal with it out here than in there. And the third reason is just because I don't like the chimney going through the attic space. We have an unaccessible attic and I just feel more comfortable having the chimney out here where I can see it, the whole thing. So we will be extending the chimney up through the eaves, out the roof quite far. We're gonna have a roof brace kit. All that's gonna come when we get to the roof. This is good for now. We'll have the living room reveal any day now, now because we're done. The living room is finished and that's exciting. So we can't wait to show the rest of it with you guys. I hope you enjoyed the wood stove install 
and I think it's awesome. I think it's perfect for the space. So happy we bought this stove. Uh, that's all we have for now. Thanks for watching, and until next time, take care. Bye.